afternoon YouTube, Scott from SE Landscaping. I am just on my way to do a bit of work with the Ferris machine, the 48 inch zero turn. But in the northeast at the moment it's very dry and although the rest of the country's had rain, we've had nothing in weeks. So what that's meant is I've been doing more watering than anything else. And like I say, while the rest of the country's had rain, we've had nothing for weeks and weeks and it's getting to the point now where um, the grass is like straw which for you guys who get paid per visit then obviously you've, I've noticed on social media people are ringing you up saying we don't want our grass cut um, the look that we've got is 99% of our work is contracted work which means we get paid for X amounts of visits so for instance at the moment we get paid just to drive over grass which may sound daft and yes some areas which are really really yellow um, I still get paid and we don't even have to get the mower off the van so you could say that's okay but like I say um, the watering is something that we happen to do more of so you lose in one place and you gain on the other um, trying to keep plants alive yes we do get paid for watering um, but it's uh, it's something that it's not a job I enjoy to be honest I don't know why it's just a, it's a bit of a pain but like I say, I'm going to cut with the first today. These, this area here was last cut a fortnight ago, so I'm assuming there's not going to be a huge amount on it. It is a fortnightly grass cut, but the way the weather is, I, I think it'll be, it'll be relatively short. So I'll get you a bit of, a bit of footage once we get to the job. What else are we doing? Well, soon, um, we're halfway through the year, nearly, believe it or not. Um, so soon we're going to be commencing hedge cutting on commercial contracts done one or two jobs on our private work but I've done um, very little hedge cutting on commercial stuff at the moment so we'll be starting with that um, and like I started last week like I showed on uh, if you follow us on Facebook and um, we started on some of the public rights away some of these um, some of these first visits on public rights away they don't, some of them get three visits here, some of them get five or six, or so the ones that only get three, this is actually the first visit, so this is the worst. This is what I call the first visit and worst visit, because if you can imagine not cutting your grass at home till now, all from sort of November last year, then that's what it would that's what it would look like. And I'm not just talking about 35 square metres, I'm talking about miles and miles of public rights away. So yes, some of it we can get our big grill in, this one here. Some of, it, some of it we can get our little grill in, this one here. And some of it is good old fashioned still streaming. So that's the, and I'm talking, there's one path um, that, that borders a river and it gets quite thick and it's just over, I think it's about 1.2 mile long. So strap a bit of petrol to you. <laughs> which isn't ideal but it's the only way rather than come back for the cans strap a bit of petrol to the back of the uh, still harness uh, with a little bit of rope tie a bit of cord around your uh, around your harness and uh, um, use your bottle of water as well if you can and away you go um, and that's uh, that's one of the longest ones but like I say we can't get, in, can't get a machine in there's no other way of doing these uh, these jobs so it's just um, grin and bear it but at the end of the day every job I look at I price beforehand so I, I know I knew what it entailed and you price if jobs are good you price that they're good and you, you, you know that you can get like if I can get a grillo in and it's a one mile old railway line I know I can cut that mile of old railway line with the grillo down and back in probably a little over 10-15 minutes now, if that mile of railway line is inaccessible to vehicles, I know that to stream that, potentially, depending on how long it is, it could be anything sort of two to three hours. That's the that's the difference you're up against. So you've got to be so careful with pricing, and that's why you see these companies who do everything on the they get tenders sent out as as maps and things, and they price everything based on like. Um, Oh, this this square meterage or that square meterage, and then they send the lads out, and then they wonder why things go wrong. You need to look at jobs. Yes, photos are alright sometimes, but when you 
if you're sat in an office just d -d 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 with your calculator, you're going to make mistakes. And, and it, you'd be quite surprised uh, a lot of these big companies, I've worked for a big company in the past, a lot of these big companies do it that way. And yes, they, they ramp the price up so they mightn't be losing out all the time. And then sometimes if they win these jobs, they'll, they'll be making a fortune anyway. But I prefer just to just to visit each individual job and know that each individual job I'm going to make X amount of money. I'm not going to lose on one and gain on three. So that's how I do things, and that's how um, my success rates good with, like I say, the, the profit we make and the amount of jobs we we successful with. So. The other thing I wanted to discuss is, um, I mentioned the student tidy up, I didn't get any footage on the jobs but I did get some before and after photos, same again if you follow us on Facebook you'll have seen them, but I'll put these photos up now. And that was the same again, that was cut with the grill ore and then over afterwards with the, um, what did we cut it with afterwards, sorry the Toro 48, the Ferris 48, sorry not Toro. So we went over it afterwards with the Ferris 48, um, just to mulch up anything that was left and we got a nice clean finish and now this, this job drops onto fortnightly so the good pairs of students, it's, I think I've said before, it's a national company we just started working for by chance, they rang us up, we started doing one job, then we did another job, then we did another job and it's just been a knock on effect. The good pairs, um, they value us, we get good feedback from them, the clients are over the moon with the, the work we deliver, so like I say, everybody's happy providing we keep delivering the service. Um, I don't see I don't see any problem. It's one of them jobs which we could have for years and years or if the management company changed to another management company then you, potentially you could lose the lose the job that way but I don't uh, envisage that in the, in the near future. I think they've got these for quite a long time. So we'll keep chipping away and keep picking any keep picking any up and um, going from there. So like I say I'm nearly at the job get you a bit of footage before and a bit of footage cutting with our um, with our furrows in a bit so stay tuned so it's just these areas around the sports field but what you find is when it's so dry the last cuts grass although there's nothing coming through on this cut it's very small the grass it needs water to, to sort of disperse so it just sits and just dries out and doesn't go anywhere so there's a lot of grass left on the surface which I'll have to mulch up again a couple more areas over there which is the same again lots left on the surface
well just cut and disperse as you can see still grass on the surface but tidy job a bit more like here than grass you can see we're coming here coming here every fortnight so just keeps them tidy there's the other one that I had quite a lot on before but it's mostly that we're getting quite nice so there you go one of my favorite machines like I said with uh, prior to, to the cutting when the the grass is just as dry as it is and it's just turned into here you really really need just some idiot just decided to pull halfway out the junction you get flats everywhere nowadays but um, yeah you really need lots of uh, you, you really need a balance of wet and dry because when it's so dry it just sits it doesn't rot down or anything like that it's a bit like a compost heap so what you find there is yes i've mulched it up again and if we don't get any um if we don't get any rain for another fortnight it'll it'll be again it'll mulch it down but um ideally we do need we do need some rain because if, if there was another fortnight like the last month we've had everything will be just everything will be just yellow really so hopefully a bit of a change in the weather um just to get these uh keep these plants alive as well and it's Thursday today so just got tomorrow and after two or three weeks of hectic days I think I mentioned on one of the last videos where I've done 13 days straight a lot of those being 15 hour days I've got a rare weekend off this weekend so not sure what the plan is um, but I've got a weekend off so probably spend one day um, lazing around in the garden relaxing and recharge more than anything because like I said the last few weeks as well as the heat it has took it out of me and um, like I say I need to uh, need to get a bit of charge back in the batteries so the Ferris um, one of my favorite machines to be honest it uh, really really like this machine the 48 it's big enough to cut decent size areas it's small enough to get in little areas it does a great job just put a new set of blades on a couple of weeks ago believe it or not the last set of blades lasted I think about 30 weeks and yes I'm not using it every day and yes I think I only had to sharpen them once in between but I noticed a couple of weeks ago it was starting to leave what I call more Higgins once you start seeing those little tufts in the grass it means a you couldn't grass it's too long or b the your blades aren't sharp enough and lifted it up and I couldn't have sharpened them because it started to go at the ends and if they go at the ends what it means is even if you sharpen them you've, you've still got that little strip in the middle that it's going to leave so it was a new set of blades to put on and these will see us well and truly through the end of the season um, will I have to sharpen them I don't know it depends if I hit anything I'm very uh, particular, although the lads aren't, I'm very particular about machines. So, for instance, we cut some areas with moles, and beforehand, I'll go and scatter them around either with my foot or I'll drop the machine, turn it off, and sort of push them. And then, when you lift it back up, you're cutting slightly higher so you're not cutting the soil. But I've got lads who, believe it or not, they think it's okay just to plow through them and then wonder and then phone me up and say oh these blades aren't cutting very well well i'm not surprised you've just put four ton of topsoil with the for the day hole and this has gone on for a couple of years but as you say you can't educate pork so i shouldn't say that because some of them watch this video and one of them will be watching it now saying hey, is he saying that about me yes i am so there you go so that's all for today guys and we will see you on the next one